Hello, uh, this is an update for my Reboy project to make a super easy Raspberry Pi in a Game Boy kit. Uh, the Kickstarter is now over, but you can pre-order the kit on my website if you're just finding this project now. I've been spending a lot of time on the display lately, mostly trying to work out what I need to do on the Raspberry Pi to make the display display things. But isn't this a solved problem? <laughs> There's clearly a working display in the Kickstarter video. Back when I made my prototype, I was using this very clever piece of open source software to run a small display using SPI, Serial Peripheral Interface. This driver is now depreciated. It doesn't work on the most recent versions of Raspberry Pi OS, but it does still work on RetroPie, as you'll see in a bit. I did always feel that driving the display over SPI with a software driver was gonna leave a little bit of performance on the table, you see, there is another way of making small displays work without resorting to HDMI. The Raspberry Pi has a feature called DPI, or Display Parallel Interface. This is a native feature of Raspberry Pi and it produces a better video signal. So that's all well and good then, right? The old SPI method is depreciated, but we have a better method, DPI, already worked out. Well, I got a Reboy sized display running over DPI months ago. And then I couldn't get the same display working with RetroPie, <laughs> the operating system that I think everyone's gonna put on their Reboys. Because the current version of RetroPie is itself a little long in the tooth. There is no sign that RetroPie is gonna get an update anytime soon to become more in line with the current versions of Raspberry Pi OS that might bring us DPI support. So I need to find a display that will work for both the current solution, the depreciated SPI display driver, but I also need to build support into the Reboy so that we can use DPI as soon as it's available in the future. And I'm starting to understand why no one's done anything quite like this before. Another issue here that needs to be addressed to get DPI working at all is the Raspberry Pi's GPIO connector. DPI requires almost all of the 40 GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi, and my prototype only picked up 14 of those GPIO pins. So those have been my problems for the last few months. <laughs> Let's have a look at the solutions. The first thing I did was to re-engineer the electrical connection between the Raspberry Pi and my motherboard, and that now looks like this. I was always going to include a fake cartridge in my Reboy kit, just as like a, a decorative piece, uh, but this piece has now evolved into a mounting bracket for the Raspberry Pi Zero. In between the bracket and the Raspberry Pi, the Reboy will use a flexible PCB with these little contacts on it. This gives us all the Raspberry Pi's data and power connections on a nice easy flat flex connector that can then just be plugged into the motherboard. No soldering required, that's a promise. <laughs> Once I was happy with this hardware solution, I not so patiently waited <laughs> for some sample displays to start arriving from wholesalers. And for each one of those displays, I needed to design a little adapter PCB to connect it to Raspberry Pis. And then I'm happy to say, I did find a display <laughs> that I could drive both over SPI and DPI. These displays are the same. So the Reboy will not need a whole new display if and when we move to DPI in the future. So here's RetroPie running over SPI, just like it did in my Kickstarter video. And this is the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS, Bookworm, running over DPI. I can't tell you how excited I am to have got all this up and running. I have literally had nightmares that as soon as I started shipping Reboy kits, something changes in the software landscape and none of them work. This whole SPI, DPI adventure has been about redundancy. I really didn't want to design myself into a corner with only one way of driving the display, only to have this thing fall over at the whim of the software gods. I do have a few more displays to try. Um, I need to find a display that looks good, works with both SPI and DPI. And then of course, uh, if I can find a cheap one, <laughs> that would be great too. So that is the display solution for the Reboy fully engineered. It's taken a little longer than I had hoped. Uh, I actually only caught this update on the GitHub while I was doing the screen capture for this video. <laughs> 
but I'm still planning, uh, yeah, I'm still planning on sending out kits uh, by the end of the year. And the really exciting thing is I can now start on the production design for the Reboy motherboard, and that really shouldn't take too long at all. I have, after all, already done this several times. And laying out PCBs is totally my zen. I actually can't wait to get going. I, of course, just needed to first know what parts I'll be using in the design. I would like to spend some time on some other YouTube videos. I have a really cool project in the works right now. Um, and just life in general has been very in the way recently. So I've just been doing life and reboy and that's about it. But that is all starting to clear up. So hopefully more and more frequent stuff uh, coming along in the future. Thanks for watching this little video. Um, please leave some comments. I do genuinely want to get better at responding to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks again to all of my Kickstarter backers. I love you all. Um, and I hope you're all having um, productive days out there. That's it. Just a short one. All right. See you later. Bye.